Today I'm sewing and sharing a top with a little twist. This is Butterick 6899. It's a simple style blouse, but the twist in the middle gives it a whole new level of personality. All the views for the pattern include the twist in the front, but there are different options for how to finish your sleeves. This pattern is intended for woven fabrics, light and flowy would be best, but because it is a simple silhouette with limited seams and no darts, this pattern could also be easily sewn in a knit. You can find this pattern at your local fabric store and online. I've left a link for you below so you can check out all the details, grab a copy, and sew it along with me. So cut out your fabric, mark your dots and your notches, and let's get started. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of your front and back neck facings. Grab your right front bodice piece, and on the wrong side of your fabric, make sure that you've marked your dots onto each of these center corners. We're going to use these dots as our stitching guide, stitching through each dot with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, starting about 5 8 of an inch away from your first dot, stitching through it to your center dot, pivoting your stitching, and stitching through your third dot, and just past it again by about 5 8 of an inch. And do this for both sets of dots. Now that we've stabilized these sections on both sides of the right front piece, we're going to take our scissors and clip to the stitching at each dot to but not through that stitching line. And this creates little flaps that we're going to hem. Take each of these little flaps and fold them to the wrong side along that stitching line, and then fold this outer raw edge of the flap underneath to create a rolled hem and pin in place. And do this for your other flap as well. And repeat on the other side. Now go to your sewing machine and edge stitch your flap close to the inner fold for all four of those little flaps. Once you've prepared your center twist area for your right front bodice piece, repeat the exact same steps to prepare these corners on your left front bodice piece. Now we're going to take the bottom section of our right front bodice piece and fold it right in the middle so that it's right sides together with itself. We're going to match up those straight edges at the center, matching your notches and pin in place. We're going to take it to our sewing machine and sew as pinned from this inner dot to the edge of the garment with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to serge this seam to finish. Now that I've stitched this horizontal seam on my right front bodice, I'm going to grab my left front bodice and place the two pieces right sides together, matching the notches on the upper center seam and pin in place. Now sew your upper center seam from the neckline to the small dot with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and serge your seam to finish. So now that our front bodice is connected at this center seam, we're going to take the bottom loose edge of the left front bodice piece and lead it through the small opening in our stitching on the right side of the garment. Now that we've led the bottom section of our left front piece through that hole, we have our tie section ready to complete. Take this bottom left section of your garment and flip it upward so that it's right sides together with the upper left bodice, and pin this left front horizontal seam just as we did on the right side. Take this section to the sewing machine and sew from the dot, back stitching to secure, all the way to the edge of the garment with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then serge this seam to finish. And now to complete the front bodice, we just have this bottom center seam left. Take your left front bodice piece and place it right sides together with the right side. Pin together this bottom center seam just as we did for the top center seam. Sew your seam from the dot to the bottom of the garment with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and serge your seam to finish. The pattern calls for a 22 inch long invisible zipper. I'm going to open up my zipper and I'm going to take it to the ironing board and I'm going to roll out these coils with my fingers and then give it a good press from top to bottom so that the coils lie flat and do this on both sides of your zipper tape. 
To prepare my center back seams for installing the zipper, I want to finish these edges. I'm going to take both of my center back seams from my right and left back pieces to my serger and serge from the top to the bottom of both of those center seams. I'm going to take the right side of my zipper tape and place it right sides together with my right back piece. I'm going to pin this zipper tape in place so that the outside edge of my zipper tape is a quarter of an inch away from the serged edge of my garment and so that the top edge of my zipper tape is a quarter of an inch below the neckline. Then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and using a zipper foot or your invisible zipper foot, I'm going to position my needle so I can stitch as close as I can to those zipper teeth from the top of the zipper to as far as my presser foot will allow me to sew to the end of the zipper. Now that I have the right side of my zipper installed, I'm going to install the left side in the same exact way, placing this left zipper tape right sides together with the left bodice back. I'm going to pin it in place, again placing the top edge of the zipper tape a quarter of an inch below the neckline and the edge of the zipper tape a quarter of an inch away from the serged edge along the center seam. Sew the left side of your zipper in place from top to bottom just as we did on the right side. Now that our zipper is fully installed, we want to finish sewing that center back seam at the bottom. Place both of your back pieces right sides together and pin them in place from the bottom of the zipper to the bottom of the garment. We're going to finish sewing the center back seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm going to keep my zipper foot installed in my machine so I can sew the first couple of inches below the zipper with the zipper foot and then after that, I'm going to switch to my regular foot and continue this seam with a 5 8 inch seam allowance to the bottom. Starting with my zipper foot will allow me to get my needle as close as I can to those zipper teeth and to the end of my zipper stitches, and I'll backstitch there to secure. Place your front and back bodice pieces right sides together. Pin together your shoulder seams matching your notches. Sew both shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and serge your seams to finish. Place your front neck facing pieces right sides together and pin or clip that center seam. Sew that seam together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. Now place both of your back neck facing pieces right sides together with your front neck facing, matching your shoulder seams and pin in place. Then sew your shoulder seams with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and press the seams open. Now we want to finish the entire outer edge of our facing. I'm going to take this to my serger and serge from the center back all the way around to the opposite center back. Place your facing right sides together with your bodice matching your center fronts and your shoulder seams. At the center backs, you're going to allow your facing to extend beyond the center back fold by 5 eighths of an inch. And do this for both sides of the center back. Now take this to your machine and stitch your facing to the neckline from center back to center back with a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way across. Once that's sewn together, trim this neckline seam allowance by about half. And then we're going to understitch our facing. With our facing lying out flat, we're going to press that seam allowance toward the facing, and then we're going to stitch the seam allowance to the facing an eighth of an inch away from the original stitching line all the way around. Now I'm going to turn the neckline facing to the inside of the garment and give that neckline seam a really good press. Take the center back edge of your facing that you allowed to extend beyond the center back by 5 eighths of an inch, fold it to the inside of the garment, tucking it in between the main garment and the rest of the facing. You want to tuck it underneath far enough so that the edge of that facing does not interrupt with the invisible zipper. And you're going to slip stitch your facing to the zipper tape and that seam allowance. Don't allow your needle to exit the front of your garment so that your stitches are invisible from the outside. And do the same thing at your opposite center back. 
To further secure the facing to the inside of the garment, we're also going to hand sew the facings at each seam allowance, making sure that the shoulder seam of your facing lines up completely with the shoulder seam of your bodice. Stitch together the surged edge of your facing to the surged edge of that seam allowance, again making sure that your needle does not exit the front of the garment. Do this at your center front seam as well, again lining up your facing seam with your bodice seam, and hand tacking the surged edge of your facing with the surged edge of your seam allowance. and also repeat for your opposite shoulder seam. Place your front and back bodice pieces right sides together and line up your side seams matching your notches. Just above the notch at your side seam, you have a dot indicating where to start your stitching. I've transferred that dot to my fabric here using a pin. I pin together this side seam from the dot to the bottom of the garment. I sew this seam from the dot back stitching to secure all the way to the bottom of the garment with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm also going to serge together that portion that I sewed and repeat for the opposite side seam as well. At the large dot where we began our side seam stitches, I clipped to that dot and to those beginning stitches and not beyond. This makes it easier to get in there and serge that seam as well as to roll the hems of our armhole. I've taken the garment to the ironing board and I pressed the armhole seam allowances all the way around to the wrong side by 5 eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to roll the hem all around the armhole. I'm going to take the raw edge and fold it to the wrong side to the crease and then fold that material on the crease and pin all the way around. Now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and edge stitch close to that inner fold all the way around and do this for both of your armholes. The very last step is to hem the bottom of the blouse. We're going to do this in the exact same way as we did for the sleeves with a rolled hem. Taking the bottom of the blouse to the ironing board and pressed up the upper raw edge to the wrong side of the garment by 5 eighths of an inch. And now I'm going to roll the hem all the way around. Once you've rolled that hem all the way around, take it to your machine and edge stitch close to that inner fold all the way around and you're all done with your blouse. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration and I'll see you in the next video.